when you have a review video for the week of a product launch and it mostly sells out the first day. I guess there's still a few models left after the first day, but I expect those will probably sell out within the week. So if you got one, I guess you'll learn a lot more about the watch before it shows up. If you're late to the party, well, maybe you'll be able to find one on the second market. But either way, I'm doing the video. Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Hit that subscribe button, the bell if you want updates. Check out my Instagram at watch underscore complications and my website, watchcomplications.com. This video is a review for the upcoming Vario Navi series. They've already released the special sort of limited edition Popeye variant of this, at least one of them. Here is one of the other models and I've had it now for a few weeks and I want to give you some insight, some update into what this watch is all about and its pros, its cons. We're gonna get into all of that detail. I've reviewed a number of Vario products over the past couple years. There are a lot of great things about this watch, definitely a lot more going for it than against it, and then a few considerations to think about if you wanna get into this particular type of watch, which is a jumping hour. I have an upcoming video, sort of a supplement to this, that will get into how the jumping hour complication actually works. And I will use this watch as an example, and I also have a jumping hour movement that I will take apart and show you how the mechanism works in a jumping hour. As you think about, is this something I would want to add to my collection? It's fun, just flip, just flip to three o'clock. Um, this is a fun design. I, I really actually kind of, kind of really like it. Let's get into the pros and cons. It's nice to have something different. I've come to expect that from Vario. They don't just make the same regular stuff you're seeing from other brands over and over again, a rehash of a diver, a rehash of this particular dress watch, so on and so forth. You're going to get a design that harkens back to the past in some ways and good design principles, but with a modern twist. And that's one of the things I like seeing from Vario. They, they are always on point with that in their watch designs particularly. In total, there are seven variants of this watch and six of those just launched on January 17th. The very first model, which was the full-on Popeye version, which had a blue dial, that launched several weeks ago and sold out fairly quickly. There are six new variants, and I have one of those. Each of the variants has a white and a blue uh, counterpart, so this is the white a small seconds compass model. So there's a blue version just like this. The only difference is the blue dial. But there's the small seconds Popeye, so it has Popeye's face that spins around. There's the compass, which is what you see here, which is blue and red. And then there is also a small seconds anchor, both again in the blue and the white dial. Both dials look great. I personally am preferring the white, I think. Um, it has a little bit more of a, I guess, a dressier look. The blue has a little bit more of a casual look about it. But whether you like the white or the blue, a model exists for each of you. Now, now I don't have the other watches in my possession, but with the small seconds on this one, you can see that it is this blue and red combination, which is fun to think about. I mean, you could always, <laughs> so which end is the seconds? Well, it doesn't really matter, whichever one you want it to be. Uh, so it's this double-sided look is, is pretty cool. When it comes to a jumping hour watch, of course you have the number here at 12 of the hour is what you care about then. Beyond that really is well-defined minute markers. Uh, here you've got the five minute increments and the other markers on the interior here. Really strong presence. One of the things I appreciate with this particular design is that a lot of space here on this outer ring, a lot of could have been done with that, with putting other markers and design work there and stuff, but wasn't, kept it simple, which keeps it clean. Um, basically, we've got the hour and we need the minutes, and that tells the story. Uh, one thing I'll say in comparison to this other jump hour, and I'm not sure why they did this, but sometimes you'll see uh, on a jump hour, what I care most about, and you can see it on the chapter ring here, is the minutes, because that's what this big hand is pointing to, is the minutes. I don't really get putting the hours on a jumping hour movement. I guess it makes it look more like a watch more generally, but as you can see, uh, there's nothing at any point that can be pointing to it and the hour mean anything. So it kind of conflates things on this design. The cue they've done a little bit bigger with the 
the minutes and foregone this big hour usage or maybe put in some different style of markers for the five minute um, increments probably would have been a better choice as the big numerals don't make much sense on a jump hour watch. This design from Vario holds a little bit better to the aesthetic and design that you would typically want to see or be going for on a jumping hour watch. There are a limited quantity of these because of the movements. It's a movement you don't see very often. It's a jumping hour movement. I'll say more specifically about that in a second. But jumping hour is something I've been messing around with lately. I'm going to do a separate video, as I mentioned, on how the jumping hour complication works. I wanted to note something here while the watch isn't running. Notice that it's not running at the moment. This is a red star jumping hour movement. It's got the same movement in it, which is the Seagull ST1721. Notice that whenever the power starts to run down on a jumping hour, this is stopped. The seconds hand is stopped on both of them. That it typically is going to run until it gets close to where the hour is going to flip, and then it's not going to have enough power to flip the hour. And so whenever a jumping hour watch stops, it's typically going to stop sometime between 11 and 12, as you see here, because it doesn't have enough power in the spring to flip that hour uh, to the next one. So it kind of gets hung up there. And then if you go ahead and flip the hour, it's going to keep on running for a little bit longer. Might even get all the way back around to the next hour and then stop there again. Just wanted to show that interesting little note about the jumping hour movement. More detail on how that mechanism flipping the hour works in the next video. One thing I will say about it right now, and this is for anyone that's potentially interested in acquiring this watch, either first-hand or second-hand, um, or has purchased one and you start interacting with it, is that a jumping hour, much like a day or date mechanism on a lot of watches may not necessarily flip directly at 12. When it comes to jumping hour movements, there are a lot more movements out there that will jump you know, a minute or 30 seconds or maybe even a couple minutes prior to the actual time hitting, in this case, say 12 o'clock, then something that's going to flip exactly at 12. That's just indicative of the mechanism. You see this on other watches with other complications sometimes, right? Like, so a date might flip a little bit before or a little bit after 12. That's why they say on a date or day date complication, don't reset or quick set the date between 10 and 2, right? Because given the mechanism, it might be flipping the date anywhere on that spectrum. And if you have a day date, typically you'll have one of those that'll flip uh, from the you know 11 to 12 hour range, and then the other one will flip on the 12 to one hour range. So they flip at different times. Uh, some higher quality mechanisms, you'll get both that will flip at the same time. But jumping hour is in that sort of same category where the expectation of it flipping exactly on the dot, on the hour, don't let that bother you. Most movements don't do that. It's going to happen a minute within a minute or two prior to the actual hour on the hour. If you want a mechanical jumping hour movement to jump exactly on the hour, that takes a little bit more attention to detail and sophisticated uh, mechanical operation with the movement design than what most companies are going to put in, they're not going to spare the expense uh, just to get it to jump exactly on the dot versus maybe, you know, 30 seconds before. It actually takes a lot more sophisticated of a design to guarantee that that hop happens exactly on the hour. And one that does it though, um, which they were very proud of and is sort of a rarity in that it does, and they've spent uh, the time developing the module in a way that it guarantees flipping directly on the hour, and that's actually CW's JJ01 uh, caliber, which the JJ modules calibers built by Christopher Ward, they took existing calibers, existing movements, and built additional modules, additional complications on top of those, and the jumping hour was their first one, and JJ01, and it does exactly that. But that's an intentional design decision, and that takes, uh, again, a more sort of sophisticated approach to the mechanism. Anyway, so I've got this stopped currently. I'm going to pull out the crown and flip the 12, right? And then you'll probably see now the compass, seconds hand on this one, will start running. I'm going to power up that mainspring a little bit so we can see it running. Again, the price on this is a little bit under $400, and I think it's certainly worth that price uh, for this micro brand. And I just want to show you what this looks like whenever you flip 
uh, the hour. So the thing is with a jumping hour movement in that wheel underneath of there, those numbers typically have to be custom printed depending on what the dial design is and where you're going to put the window for the hour. Any jumping hour wheel you're going to have inside of the case and under the dial and the movement is going to have to be custom made. And so that's printed in a certain way so that the different numerals of the hours will show up correctly uh, whenever that wheel flips around in the different ways it flips around. We'll take an up close look at these whenever we, we take the movement apart. The movement, I'll give you an idea of what it looks like in that future jumping hour video, but this is what it kind of looks like. The rotor is different on this one, obviously, but you can see that it is an automatic movement. And I'm going to take this one apart. I'm going to crack open this case and show you how that jumping hour mechanism works. But I'm going to use the movement in this one to actually do that video. So you're going to see me take this watch apart here soon. And since I'm talking a little bit more detailed context for the jumping hour complication, and I'm going to focus on the pros and the cons, uh, what I like about this watch, I'm only going to briefly highlight the specs uh, in this video. So the diameter, 38 millimeter, height, 10.85 lug to lug 46 millimeter strap width 20 millimeter and weight on this zulu style canvas strap is about 74 75 grams case stainless steel sapphire crystal we have a solid case back which i'll show you up close pictures of as well i still have the sticker on the back i've been wearing this for about i've had it for a month now and i've probably worn it a total of 10 days or something like that out of a month so quite a bit of wear. Crown is a regular crown uh, push-pull. Uh, the water resistance is 10 ATM, so about 100 meters, 330 feet. The movement is the Seagull ST1721. That's a jumping hour movement with the small seconds at six. It is a non-hacking movement. So you'll note, or maybe you notice whenever I pulled the crown out earlier, you can see that the small seconds is still ticking away. This has about a 40 hour power reserve. What helps with that is the beat rate's a little bit lower, 21.6, and it's a 20 joule movement. Warranty from Vario is one year. Price of this is about 400 bucks, a little bit under. And it, you can see it's got a guilloche style wave dial, and there is no loom on this watch. So the series is called the Navi jump hour and then we have the popeye versions of the watch we got the compass and the anchor uh, as far as the small seconds are concerned so we've got this maritime navigation sailor theme all throughout of course the full-on popeye version popeye is a sailor you can get the one with his face on it or the full body one but either way we've got this nautical motif running throughout the design things i didn't even really notice at first so just looking at it what are the things that give you that feel well Obviously the dial, right? This looks like some sort of wheel uh, you might have on a boat. Got the compass thing going here. Of course, you can anchor version of this. But look, look at the crown. The crown is a sailor hat. I didn't even notice that at first. Uh, but it's just those little details. That it's like, oh, oh, that's why it looks like a cohesive design. Even the crown of is playing its part with the design. Sort of classic design elements that are visual here are with the jumping hour, we've got a Breguet style minute hand, right? Or the lugs kind of make me think of Omega in the way that they're curved and wrapped toward the center. And so it's got some other really good design visuals about it, even though it's got two elements that I typically don't like on watches. Like Brian, what are the things that you wouldn't like normally? Coin edge is one thing. I mean, I really like the Omega Globemaster, the annual calendar, especially in the blue and silver color. But that bezel, that coin edge just drives me nuts. Um, I will never get it probably because of the bezel. But for some reason, it's subtle here. It, it doesn't stand out from the edge of the case in an annoying way. It flows well. For some reason, it works okay for me on this watch. Second thing would be the Cyclops. Okay, I've got like a whole rant about Cyclops in maybe multiple videos. I just dislike it. Um, and particularly whenever it's amplifying a date position that is already making the watch face asymmetrical so when you have a date at three with big cyclops on top of it yeah rolex it's just ugly sorry um here we've got it at 12 and 
I'm okay with this. If I was ever going to have a Cyclops on a watch, this is maybe the only situation I'm okay with it, where it might actually look better than not having it. So it works anywhere, it's here. And it's not just because it's a jumping hour and this is amplifying the hour. With the whole nautical theme, it kind of looks like a porthole. Like it's round, it's not curved on two sides, but then flat on the other two sides. It's just a circle and it gives you that sort of porthole on a ship sort of visual look. Again, I don't think that was intentional on their part, but that's what it says to me. It's what it speaks to me as. So it flows with the design and it's amplifying the hour on a symmetrical design as opposed to something like a date on an asymmetrical design. So I think it's okay here. I'll, you'll probably never hear me say that again. Crown, uh, again, it's got you know pros and cons. It, pulling it can be a little bit hard uh, because the uh, crown is tapered again to sort of give that sailor hat look so unless you have a, a little bit of a fingernail there it can be a little bit hard to to grasp the crown at times but it's okay it's not like the worst thing i think the case is excellent i gave you this dimensions it's 38 millimeter by about just under 11 millimeter it's a nice slim profile this is super comfortable even if you don't like the watch a ton and for me, I, I'd really like it, but it, it's sort of on the edge of really like and okay for me. But once it's on the wrist, it ended up just staying on the wrist for like a week straight because it's so comfortable. It's first watch in a while that I you just wore to sleep and didn't notice or care that much. And it stayed on my wrist multiple times, even through the night. It's like, I don't know, it's just super comfortable. It's got a great profile to it. You can see it's horizontally brushed. Uh, down the sides. You can see it's got the drill lugs, which I think people are going to love. That's a pro for a lot of people. I get that Bergeon tool, easy to punch those out and change out straps. Uh, it's on this, again, going to the comfort and wearability of this watch. Having this Zulu style, that's just speaking to the, the keeper design that's on these. Vario has a lot of uh, these Zulu style uh, canvas straps. Love this design, super comfortable. Hugs a wrist, slow profile, even with that Cyclops. I mean, look at the, it's like got that dress style look about it from the side, right? It's 10 to 11 millimeters uh, height. It's just a nice thin watch and that diameter is a little small, but because it's all dial, it looks bigger than 38. It looks like a 40 millimeter watch, but it wears like a 38 millimeter watch. What gives it that big visual is you've got that Cyclops with that hour and then you have just all dial clear to the edge. So it's just taking full advantage of the real estate. With the crystal being raised but flat, it just says, boom, here's the dial. Case back is solid, which I think is a perfectly suitable choice. Uh, Ivan does like to do closed case backs here and there. You can see it's got the sort of the compass navigation uh, theme running that as well. It's got all the, you know, the specs and stuff on it. And he always says, you know, designed in Singapore, something he's quite proud of. It is one of the better brands from Singapore. So a quick summary of the pros and what I really like about this watch. It is extremely comfortable and wearable. It's different, right? You don't see a watch like this every day. Any time I've posted, it's like, oh, that's different. That's unique. I haven't seen much dislike for this in at least feedback that I've seen so far. Uh, so it's got this great cohesive design. If you're gonna have a Cyclops on a watch, this works. Even though the crown can be a little bit uh, hard to tug at sometimes, uh, it's interesting that it fits the design uh, with that sailor hat look about it. The case is the best thing about it. Yeah, the design, jumping hour is different, all that. But I think the case, the comfort of that, and the lugs, the way they're profiled uh, and shaped, it's got that Omega feel to it. And I like the case back as well. The Zulu style uh, canvas strap, is really a great choice for this watch. Uh, it just adds to that comfort and wearability. Blends and makes a nice casual semi-dress style watch uh, with a, an overall great look and design about it. So well done, uh, Vario, on this particular model. I do wanna give you a quick macro shot, I guess, before we finish things up. And just to give you an idea of what this does look like up close a little bit more. Typically I throw in some macro shots, but Here's some video for you. See, we've got the concentric circles around the small seconds with the 15, 30, 45, and 60 mark. That wave pattern on the dial, a Breguet style minute hand, jump hour, which is circled. Tolerances there are pretty good, both with the 
window and where the hour is showing up along with the circle printed in the Cyclops alignment. That all looks pretty, pretty good. That could be really easy to get off the mark, you know. I like this, the painting on the small seconds hand. Even where the blue meets the red, you get a little bit of that darker color around the edges on the red. There you can see the sailor hat crown. Horizontal brushing. So we've got the drilled lugs. The case is just really, really cool. Don't always like it, but it works here, I think. The coin edge, the bezel. And then you can see the brushing and the profiles on the lugs. Just really well done. Looks great. Looks great, great, great. And I'm not going to take the strap all the way off. You know, you look, look at pictures and stuff. There we go. You see design in Singapore, stainless steel, 10 ATM, automatic, and it's got the compass. So that's a little bit more up close look for you. So you're welcome. So this is the Vario Navi jumping hour. This is the compass version. There are, I actually think this one sold out on the first day. Not a lot of these sitting around. I recommend getting one sooner rather than later or else contact Ivan and see if he'll have any others in the future. So I'll put all the links in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed this first look. I think this one just knocked out of the park. And what's nice is, is the brand has gotten established enough and doing well enough that now these are just being offered for sale on the site and things like Kickstarter and stuff aren't needed anymore to keep this moving along. So that's, that's what's really great about uh, the growth of a micro brand. So there we go. Let's check out. After wearing this watch for the past several weeks, it has to be one of the most comfortable watches I've actually worn. I think it's a combination of the case design, which is very well thought out with this Zulu style canvas strap. Like I've worn it to bed multiple times. I typically don't wear watches to bed and sleep with them overnight. I've done that with this watch and not care to wink, you know, pun intended. It's, it's just an extremely comfortable watch. A lot of it's the size, the diameter, the lug design, and the strap design. I, I think it's just, a, it, it, it works. The biggest drawback for it, I'd say, is the movement, and there just aren't a lot of jumping hour movements out there. And so that's something any maker would always contend with, is what makes a good jumping hour movement. A lot of them aren't super accurate with when that hour flips. And they can be a little bit wonky, particularly if you want a custom uh, font size for the hour number, the numeral, it's an issue you're gonna contend with. And so I think that's one thing, but this is such an excellent implementation from a design and aesthetic standpoint, that it, particularly at the price point, if you want a jumping hour, this is a nice opportunity, a good path to go, and it's got that sort of whimsical nature to it, but it's also got a very subdued uh, offering of models. So you could go with that Popeye model and some of the ones that are the more cartoonish related ones, or if you want something that's more, I guess, dressy, maritime looking, and, and just sort of more normal, then there's the offerings for that. And as I reflect on my review experiences, this one has actually been one of the more enjoyable ones that I've done. I think it's just because of the case design, to be honest, more than anything. The case, the dial design, it, it hands, it works. It, it's just been enjoyable. I, I, it's hard to explain, but when you know it, you know it. So I'm just going to trust that. Thanks for joining me. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. The bell if you want updates. All the info for my Instagram website in the description below, along with a link to the pictures and text review of this watch. Bon voyage, I'm out.